Hi, this is Rohit from careersprints.com and we like to produce videos that help you with your professional development and continuous learning. Now in this video, I want to talk about how quality management is really handled or managed in the world of Agile. So let's get started. Now before we move on to talk about the differences between how quality is managed in predictive versus agile projects, we first need to draw our attention to some of the agile principles that make sense from a quality perspective. So first, let's look at principle number nine, which says continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. Now, this principle basically points to all the different technical practices that exist in the world of agile that can really help you do proper testing or proper development uh, you know, within your sprint and be able to produce value for your end user or your customer. Now, when we talk about the next principle, where it says at regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective, then tunes and adjusts its behavior accordingly. This is another principle that talks about how teams come together uh, during, let's say, a retrospective, and they are able to reflect on the quality of the work that they are doing and what action plans emerge from the retrospective, and they are able to apply them and enhance the quality of the work that they are doing. So we are going to look at how these two principles are really applied in the world of Agile uh, as we go along in this presentation. So first, let's look at some of the differences between predictive and Agile projects from a quality perspective. Now, if you look at predictive, it says testing is the final phase of a project before product deployment. Now, the thing about predictive projects is that uh, in predictive projects, we have a defined stage for every activity that we do in a project. For example, we may have stages such as analysis, we may have stage such as design after analysis, then we will have development, uh, then we may have a testing phase, and then finally we will have a phase of release. Now, all these different steps in the world of predictive are, are carried out in a sequential fashion. So by the time you get to testing, you have to go through the analysis phase, the design phase, the development phase. And by the time you go through all these phases, a couple of months or weeks may have passed by, right? Because of which what would happen is that by the time you get to testing, uh, you know, a lot of the work has already been done. Uh, you Because you have not done any testing in any of the earlier phases, you may not really know what issues may have, uh, may have been built into the product and they only reveal themselves in the testing phase and you know testing is something that happens just before deployment so you are basically spending a lot of time in the testing phase doing a lot of firefighting or you know trying to figure out uh, a lot of issues that need to be addressed whereas in the world of agile because we focus on shorter iterations with incremental delivery right we at the end of every one week or two week sprints or iterations we are always releasing something to our end user to our and to our customer. And within that two week time box or sprint that we have, we are doing analysis, we are doing design, we are doing development, and we are also doing testing. So in the world of Agile, we are frequently testing and uh, we are ensuring that the solution meets the end user's requirements and only then we are releasing them to the end user or to the customer. Additionally, another thing that we do in the world of Agile is that we define something known as a definition of done. Now, a definition of done basically serves as a quality criteria for the team that the team needs to commit and match up to for every increment that they are building at the end of a sprint. So the team cannot really release anything out to production or out to the end user or customer if the team does not meet the definition of done or the quality criteria of the increment that was defined. So the definition of done is something that could be defined at the beginning of the project and then is constantly refined and enhanced at the end of each iteration. So using continuous testing uh, in each sprint and also ensuring that you meet the definition of done enables the team to meet uh, quality criteria uh, on an ongoing basis. Now, the next point of difference between predictive and agile projects is that quality management in predictive is a reactive practice, whereas quality management in agile is both reactive and proactive. Now, let's understand what this really means. So in the world of predictive, we are normally doing testing just before the release of the product uh, or the service that we are building. So we are doing analysis, we are doing design, we are doing development, 
and only after a couple of months have passed by doing these activities we are actually getting into testing so this is more of a reactive practice because we've not really identified any issues or any bugs during development or during design we only get to know about them when we are actually in the testing phases whereas in the world of agile right because we are releasing every two weeks uh, or we are doing our iterations every two weeks we are not only being reactive but we are also being proactive and the way we are being proactive is that you know there are many agile practices that we can include uh, during these two week sprints that we are doing such as pair programming or uh, continuous integration or establishing some code standards or uh, you know generally agile projects have face to face communication so there are some there are various agile practices that kind of come together that you can apply during a sprint and you can proactively ensure that you are at least reducing or eliminating some of the quality issues that are coming up uh, in your iterations plus you are also constantly getting feedback from your end user or your customer at the end of these two weeks which 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 is another feedback mechanism that is enabling you to understand any quality challenges or issues that exist in the product that needs to be addressed before the next iteration or the end of the release now let's talk about risks when it comes to predictive versus agile projects so as you can see what's written on the slide it says risk is higher when quality problems are found at the end of the project basically what they are trying to say that in the world of predictive because the testing is only happening towards the end of the project uh, maybe after a couple of months after doing all the other activities a lot of risks or issues may have already made their way through into your product and when you're trying to address them at the end of the project you are going to spend more money and more time trying to fix those issues or bugs whereas in the world of agile you know there are more complex features can be tested early in the sprints thereby reducing risk so if you know that you're going to have certain complex features in your product what you can do is that you can ensure in the world of agile that you try to build some of these features early in the project you show them to your customer you get feedback on those complex features and uh, you can refine those complex features to make it better uh, as you go along through the other sprints uh, in your project that way the sunk cost in the world of agile is much lower because you are getting quick feedback you are using that feedback to eliminate all the things that could be wrong with your product uh, early as early as possible in your project now imagine if you in the world of predictive because you're not getting this early feedback a lot of cost is already being incurred which could have been saved had you worked in in a more agile fashion right so that's one of the key differences here when it comes to risk now let's talk about bugs right so it says in in predictive projects defects or bugs are harder to find at the end of the project uh, obviously you know this could be quite possible because uh you, you know by the time you are integrating all the different components in the world of predictive and you're bringing them together uh, you know, it could have become a very, very complex uh, system or a very complex product. And, you know, the more the complexity in the product, the harder it is to find bugs. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack, right? Um, so so that is one of the major challenges with uh, using a predictive style uh, uh, project management method. Now, comparing predictive to agile, you would see that problems are easier to find when you test a smaller amount of work. Obviously, you know, when you are bringing together small pieces of work and, and when you're testing them frequently, it would be easier to test uh, and get a, a, a result, you know, when you're bringing these small pieces of work together. So that is one of the advantages that, you know, working in an agile way really brings to your projects. Plus, you know fixes are also easier when you fix something that you just created rather than something that you created months earlier and you're now you're trying to test it after many many months have passed by and finally in the world of predictive teams might test inadequately to meet release and cost timelines whereas in the world of agile testing is a daily practice in fact it is a part of every sprint so what happens is that in predictive projects generally towards the end of the project when you are just about to release or a couple of days prior to the release if you are involved in testing uh, you know and you know that you got to meet the release deadline you may start cutting corners 
you know in terms of the kinds of tests that you're doing you for example you may uh, you know not really test the code that rigorously or you may not really test the code in a production environment and uh, or you may not test the code with uh, you know good enough sample size of data you know you could basically be cutting all sorts of corners just to meet that release deadline and when you normally do that the cost of quality or uh, the bugs really start showing up when the product is in production which can harm your brand which can reduce the uh, overall experience of the end user when they are trying to use the product and uh, overall cause harm to your organization whereas in the world of agile testing is a daily practice uh, for example practices like continuous integration where teams or developers you know when they are working on their code base they are ensuring that they are integrating their code base to the main code branch at least once every day now when they are doing this on a daily basis every day they are checking the quality of the work that work that they are doing and seeing if it's integrating successfully with the more main code branch or not now by doing this they are able to ensure that if there are any bugs or any issues that exist they are able to eliminate them on a daily basis and this is something that is done is done daily plus you have the definition of done that the team needs to adhere to at the end of every sprint so you know taking the amalgamation of various agile practices you would notice that overall the quality of testing is much better and when the quality of testing is better the overall quality of the product is obviously going to be better uh, in an agile uh, when you're using an agile project management method as well so these are some of the major differences between predictive as well as uh, agile uh, projects and the way quality is managed in uh, these two uh, type different types of uh, ways of working right now let's look at some key agile practices that really enhance quality management right these are some practices that i've taken from the pm book and you know you will also find many articles about them or generally on the internet but uh, let's talk about test driven development test aut automation and continuous integration so one of the practices that is popular in the world of agile is test driven development so uh, you know mature agile teams would normally use a practice like this now test driven development is basically a development method where you actually first write the test case and then you write just enough functional code so that the uh, code is able to pass the test that was written now the advantage with working uh, or using test driven development is that first of all you're just writing enough functional code that should be written to pass a test case secondly because you're writing the test case first and then you're writing the code or just writing enough code to pass the test you are focusing on the outcome right uh, you because you you're thinking from a end user's perspective by writing the test case first you are really really focused on achieving a successful outcome which would satisfy the end user or the customer so that is the practice of test driven development next is test of automation now as your code base grows right you would start realizing that if you continue doing manual testing you may not be able to work in an agile manner it will actually become a bottleneck trying to work uh, or trying to use more uh, manual practices uh, in an agile setup right because you have a shorter time frame and if you have to do something within a shorter time frame if you keep doing things manually it's going to take you a lot of time and you're never going to meet your targets so a better practice is to introduce automation of your testing process as much as possible uh, as your team matures and as your code base also grows so you can start with something such as uh, automating your you know top priority test cases or your major test cases that uh, you know may require a lot of time or a lot of effort and so on and so forth and lastly is the practice of continuous integration something that i just spoke about a few minutes back the continuous integration practice is basically the practice of building testing and deploying your code or your uh, you know or your build on a regular basis so as developers work on their local machines they basically are going to check in code into a uh, into a repository and from that repository the code is going to get picked up it is going to get uh, integrated and built uh, and then uh, you know you can automate the suite of tests uh, uh, so basically the code gets picked up it gets built it gets tested and then it gets deployed uh, if you know it's an automated deployment uh, sort of a pipeline that you have built so continuous integration really helps in a, at least in the software space 
really helps you with uh, with integrating con continuously with all the other components that other people are building in your organization and uh, test them and then release them so this reduces your risk this uh, reduces the cost that you would incur on uh, low quality code um, you know and uh, this uh, ensures that you are able to release uh, products and services to customers much faster so you know these are the major differences between uh, 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 or the major practices that are used in the world of agile with regards to quality management a lot of these practices are used in the world of software but they can also be used and you can see how some of these practices may even apply to areas outside of software right these are actually management practices and not 100% necessarily technical practices so uh, the the, uh, the idea is that in the world of agile quality management is done differently as compared to predictive and uh, I'm sure you can appreciate the advantages that uh, this would bring to your projects. All right. Thanks for watching this video. In this video, I've just explained how quality management is carried out in an agile setup. Also, don't forget to look at the agile practice guide where you'll find similar information about the application of quality management in an agile scenario. If you like this video, you know what you must do. Please go and hit that like button. If you hit that like button, this video will be visible to many other people such as yourself who can use this knowledge for their PNB exam. And if you like to see more videos from us like this, please do go and hit that subscribe button as well. Also, before you leave, I quickly wanted to talk about the free PNB virtual class that we conduct a couple of times in a month. Now, with this free class, we cover a lot of useful information about the PMP, such as all the changes that have been made to the PMP exam in 2021, any books and resources that you can leverage for the PMP certification exam preparation, any pitfalls to avoid while preparing for the exam, and what steps you can take to gain the certification successfully. Additionally, we also teach at least one chapter for free from the PM book. So if you're interested in this class, the link for it is in the description below. Please go and register for the class. Now also check out this Udemy course that we've created on the Agile Practice Guide, which is considered be, to be one of the main reference books for the PMP exam. Greater than 50% of the PMP exam is now based on Agile concepts. So the Agile Practice Guide is an extremely critical resource that you would want to use for your PMP exam prep strategy. This is also the only course on Udemy which is purely based on the Agile practice guide. So it has a razor sharp focus for what you need to know for the PMP exam. You can use the coupon code that is given in the description of this video and get this course at a discount. Finally, I would like to make an important announcement. We are going to have very soon an in-person class that will talk about the PMP exam psychology. In this class, we'll help you develop the mental muscle to tackle tricky and difficult PMP questions just like a pro. This workshop would be for 10 to 12 hours where we'll help you develop the right mindset to crack the PMP exam in your first attempt. And the cost for this class is going to be extremely reasonable. Now, if you're interested in this class, you can send us an email at info at saying that you're interested and we will send you back the details. So thanks a lot for watching this video. We wish you all the best for the PMP exam.